Those of us with a believing loyalty in Christ, those of us who are not moved by the social winds, we are the revolution. From the studios of the Ram Cave and the home of the Camellias, I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for August 22nd, 2023. As always, we are praying for our young people. Today we're going to be in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. This is episode number 115 of A Ministry Without Parole. And because I'm on at 11.43 in the a.m., I still am saying <coughs> good morning. I had a breakfast meeting this morning, had a phone conversation, a phone call, important phone call this morning. So I do apologize for getting on late. I know I don't expect anyone to see me live. But as you watch this later, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for clicking on. Please leave comments, likes, shares, all that such. Uh, John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 is a simple verse. Uh, it's powerful. It's, it's marvelous. We've heard it often. Don't hear it as much anymore, though. I seem to have heard it quite a bit growing up, but I don't hear it as much now in uh, church circles. I guess every uh, passage has its moments, has its time. Uh, the only one that seems to be ubiquitous all the way through history is John 3.16. But let's look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, and just do a brief application pray and get you going. Kelly McCoy, dude, you are faithful. Thank you so much for clicking on and bearing with me this morning. All right. First John chapter four, verse four. And Paul is, uh, not Paul, John is speaking to the church here. And he says this, you dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. I'm going to read that one more time. You, me, I, us, dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. John, as we recognize the context of chapter four, is speaking about false prophets, false spirits, uh, an antichrist spirit that has gone out and continues to go out and deceive. And he sends this clear message. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Uh, we live in such a, a defensive attitude about our faith. And, and I get defending our faith. I understand arguing for our faith. But we're always like trying to say, yeah, but but this is why I believe in God. And no, no, this is why I believe in God. Because he dwells in me and he who dwells in me is greater than he who is in the world. The one who is in you is Christ. The one who is in the world is the enemy, devil, Satan, Lucifer, the old serpent, the dragon, intelligent evil, however you want to label it, but it does deserve a label. It does deserve some sort of a pronoun type thing there because in enough of our places in our universities, we're, we're moving away from the word of God and we're not using the word devil, Satan, sin, any of those things because they're offensive and, and we just don't like it. And we give ground to the enemy here. And I'll tell you, if you've got a church that refuses to talk about an enemy or sin, you're in the wrong church and made that church close its doors forever. Uh, it, it made that pastor never preach again because that is not the word of God that we've been called to preach. Uh, the one who is in you is greater than the one who's in the world. You don't need ruby slippers, a seminary degree, or the spirituality of Billy Graham. We overcome all of the world and all of that is in the world because the one who is in us is greater than the one in the world. Our lives are to be ones of freedom and victory. But before you think I'm selling you some uh, televangelist street preacher stuff where you're happy all day long, let me just remind you that because you live in freedom and victory, you will be attacked. And every attack, um, every assail on us or our families or on our churches or our ministries is an effort to take away our freedom with chains of anger and victimhood and to diminish the victories we've experienced and have them devalued into a meaningless uh, uh, exercise or experience. Like, I gave my life to God, nothing changed, look, everything's bad. And of course the enemy's gonna attack you. Of course the enemy is gonna try to pull you back in chains. Of course the enemy's gonna try to convince you that the moment you surrendered to God, that was the moment that it really didn't matter, it didn't amount to anything. And here John is saying, He's saying here, um, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. You are from God. 
In Romans 8, Paul reminds us that we are more than conquerors, and here John reminds us that we are from and belong to God, and we have overcome, can overcome, and will overcome all the world throws at us by remaining steadfast in the knowledge that the one who is in you, us, I, we, me, right, is greater than the one who is in the world. This is what we want for our young people to recognize so that they won't be beguiled by smooth, flattering words or cool, round, pear-shaped tones into believing they are common and have no power and no authority through Christ. We want them to be courageous and to have the grit to keep going forward in the Lord, never settling for the soul-soothing, ego-building, false community of counterfeit compassion, but to develop the ability, not by emotion, but by knowledge, the knowledge that God's word is true and to avoid all conformity with the sensibilities and hopelessness and vanity of our present culture, to be optimistic for the future. So when face to face with the spiritual hostility of this world, they will be alert, unmovable, unshakable, and undefeated in him and absolutely terrifying because that is what you are. You are absolutely terrifying to those opposing Christ in the spiritual realm. And we want our young people to be the very same absolutely terrifying to those in the opposing Christ in the spiritual realm. Looking alone to Jesus, living in his strength, our young people and we will always be victorious. And that's why, that's why we pray for our young people every day as they hit those campuses and go to those places. Martha Meter, thank you so much for clicking on. Okay, hey, we're going to get the prayer requests in. I'm going fast today because... Um, well, I'm on late and you want to get to lunch. Uh, continue to pray for Maui. Uh, continue to lift up Maui and all that is going on there. We pray for those battling diabetes, Victor Storms, Ronnie Maldonado, Jeff Keith, uh, the, the husband of Julie Keith. She's a pastor at our Tehachapi Church. Uh, he, he, he had surgery and uh, pretty serious surgery. Be in prayer for him. Be in prayer for the Sinem Rodriguez family uh, as uh, they make preparations for the service to bury Donnie, her, their mom. Uh, we pray for uh, Tim Smith in Pennsylvania. Brian uh, had a brain injury uh, many years ago, but his family is struggling now. Pray for Heather, a young girl and her salvation. We continue to pray for uh, Hector, uh, the young man battling mental illness. Uh, and he is getting help. We pray for him and his family. We pray for Rafi, our neighborhood boy, that he would continue to be around us, Lord, but and that he would receive each time he is around us something of the Lord to carry with him later uh, in life. Uh, we also ask for um, uh, Holly Randolph, who is basically learning uh, to walk again. We ask for uh, uh, Corey and Christy, and the past, at the, after the passing of their son, that they continue to go forward. We pray for John Strickland in North Carolina, Frank Griffin in Arizona, Richard Stewart in Las Vegas. We pray for Mark and Debbie Lehman who are traveling back from Oklahoma after selling their home. We pray for Jan, our 87-year-old Marine, Piper Morris and her son Grayson up in Idaho. Uh, he has crab leukodystrophy. We continue to pray for Darlene Carroll's friends, Thea and Kathy Duncan. We pray for the Lynch family as John has been moved uh, into a rehab-like hospital due to his condition. Uh, we pray for the Lynch household and his wife, Barbara. Pray for those battling cancer, Kirk McDonald, Dion Nizzi, uh, Rachel Gilbert, Enrique Romo, Colby Van Dyke, and Emmanuel. We pray there. And Tim Burns, as they battle cancer, the treatment of cancer, uh, the recovery from cancer. Pray for Vision Paradise, Pastor Walter, Pastor Francis, Edgar and the group there. Pray for Vision Paradise, as well as Burbank Faith, that we remain like-minded and that for Burbank Faith, that we look at each Sunday as an opportunity to uh, have an amazing moment with you. Not thinking about what happens in September or October, although we have to plan and have vision, but pray for us that this Sunday's message is on point and that the worship is on point and that folks are thinking now, even now, thinking like, hey, I need to be in service because this is good but being in service together is better. Pray for Granite Ridge Home Camp and all the staff there uh, and everything that they are going through. So let's pray. And uh, like I said, it was a kind of an abbreviated uh, message today, but we're going to pray and get you going. Dee Dee McCoy, thank you 
so much for clicking on. Lord, we do ask for our young people today, God. We pray that, Lord, you would remind them who they are in you and that it's not about outward adornment. It is not about the props that the world gives them. It is not about the praise of the world. It is about who they are in you and who dwells in them. And remind them, Lord, that 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 who dwells in them is greater than, than, than him who dwells in the world. And so, Lord, we pray for our young people, Lord. We pray as you are present in their lives, Lord, that they would have a discerning spirit brought upon them, Lord, where they can see the fraudulence of this world and that they would, again, surrender more of themselves to you. Lord, we pray for those who have it, it, um, large influence on others, Lord. Teachers, preachers, uh, entertainers, athletes, Lord, politicians, soldiers, police officers, those who, who have an opportunity to influence that claim a believing loyalty in you. Lord, give them, us all, courage to do what is right, not what is expedient or what is good for our careers, but what is right in proclaiming this gospel, no matter the outcome, Lord. Teach us to trust in you. And so, Lord, we pray for our young people today. Be with them on their campuses. Be with them as they face the curriculum. Lord, speak to them, protect them, guard them, guide them, and uh, demonstrate something amazing to them today. And, Lord, we ask for those in Maui recovering from everything that is going on and everything that's going to happen going forward and all the the political stuff that will be taking place, Lord. We pray for Maui today. Lord, we pray for Victor, Ronnie, and Jeff battling diabetes, Lord. We pray for the Stidham Rodriguez family, Tim Smith, uh, Brian, Heather, Hector, Rafi, Holly Randolph, Corey and Christy, John Strickland in North Carolina, uh, Frank in Arizona, Richard in Las Vegas. We pray for the Laymans as they travel cross country. We pray for Jan, our 87-year-old Marine. We pray for Piper and her son Grayson in Idaho. We pray for Darlene Carroll's friends, Thea and Kathy Duncan up in Washington, Lord. We pray, Lord, for John and Barbara Lynch and especially the hard place, the difficult place they are in now. Lord, we pray for those battling cancer, Lord. Kirk McDonald, Dion Mizzy, Rachel Gilbert, Enrique Romo, uh, Colby Van Dyke, uh, and Emmanuel, who doing uh, and uh, and Tim Burns, who is doing well, Lord, we continue to ask your hand upon his life, Lord. We pray for Vision Paradise. We pray for our future Armenian ministry. And we pray for Burbank Faith itself, Lord, that we would, uh, again, create three congregations like-minded in you, preaching the gospel at 505 South 6th Street. And Lord, help us not to be caught up, any of us, in our own membership and our own numbers at our church, but let us be caught up in the citizenship of the kingdom. And Lord, we do pray for, for Burbank Faith that this Sunday is not ordinary, but it's extraordinary. Lord, uh, convict hearts now that need that presence of being together in worship, Lord. Let them take advantage of this precious, precious time. Uh, they'll never, ever, ever again be another August 27th ever again, Lord. And so we pray for the Sunday that is coming, Lord and that it is special, and that it is marvelous. And we pray for Granite Ridge, home camp, and all the things that are going on there, Lord. We continue to pray for the Sites household. We pray for Tracy's health. Pray for all the staff there, Shea Stewart, and everybody that is there, God. We ask that you would move, that you would bless, as they are a blessing to others, Lord. Lord, um, Lord, move and confirm to them that the one who is in them is greater than the one who is in the world. Lord, again, we thank you for loving us and the hope that we find in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, the shortest show ever. Wow, that is pretty awesome. Um, not even at 14 minutes. I told you it was abbreviated, and it looks like I'm going to get you out of here before noontime. So it was the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning Show. Okay, so I'm going to let you go. And uh, just remember this. Those of us with a believing loyalty in Christ, those of us who are not moved by social winds, we are the revolution. We are not the establishment. We are the revolution. God bless, take care, and we will talk to you tomorrow.